The second one, we, we can do it as a motion. Typically what we've done in the past is council has put together a letter and asked each council member to sign it, and then we send it to the um, organization or individual that we are looking for. So, you know, that's how we've done them in the past. We can do it as a motion, and you can, we can draft the letter and then send it, or we can do a letter and have each council member attach their their name and their ward to the letter and then send it as a body that way. So however you prefer, Mr. Mays. However the body prefers. It's just the intent of getting dialogue and action as it relates to jobs and economic development. So whatever the body defer, um, prefers, and I mean nine heads is better than one. I'm open, but the intent won't go away. Well, there's been a motion that's been moved and supported. Is there further discussion on that motion? I've got a question. Is the letter to uh, request that he come here, or is the letter requesting he send us information because you said both things? And I, and I still stick with both things. That's our congressman. He might be smarter in that area than us, so I want the letter to address both concerns. If he can't give us written communications on what we have opportunities for, then I would like him to come here and dialogue with us, and I would like that contained in the letter. So it's his choice once he received the letter, but I want him to know that we're on the move communicating and lobbying for the city of Flint for economic development money similar to what we got for the land bank to tear down. I'm ready to build up. Okay, there's, there's, there's been a motion that's been moved and supported, and if Mr. Mays, you would kind of put together just a rough draft so that we can start working from what your request is over and above beyond what you've just said. And Michigan um, State, I can do a little Madam, draft. Madam Clerk, you want to? Um, Mr. Mays, uh, kind of in response to your concern about Mr. Kildee and the letter to Mr. Kildee, uh, as a part of some of the orientation that we plan for council, we have plans of uh, inviting in Mr. Kildee, as well as Mrs. Stabadaw, our U.S. Senator, and Senator Levin to do exactly what you're saying. And, yeah. and in that regard, also the state reps, so that there's ongoing dialogue with respect to jobs, the economy, and other things that might impact our community. So yeah. uh, that is in motion already. I mean, I'm not trying to negate your uh, well, motion, but I was just telling you that's in motion. Remember, I told you I'm new, and I can't sit still and let it happen in my four-year term. And so I'm going to stick with that letter, and with the people that you named, I could make an amendment and send them a copy of the same letter. But I don't know what time frame this is happening. Do you know what time frame these people would be getting together on our behalf? We were looking at sometime before, uh, before the end of the year is what we were looking at. And I would still stick with the um, letter, and I would amend it to add the other people who you talked about in my motion. So I would amend the motion and like the duplicate letters sent out to all of those people who you had been working on just so they know that this is a new council and this new council is going on record for action. So I would so move to amend. I recognize your motion. Is there support for his amendment? Yeah, I support. Okay. Further discussion? Roll, Madam Clerk. Mr. Nolden? Yes. Mr. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Ms. Van Buren? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Mr. Mays? Just so people know when they come to this mic, it means something, I vote yes. Thank you, Sister Mohammed. Ms. Pompla? Yes. The vote is nine yes, is zero no for the letter. Okay. Thank you. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is A.C. Dumas. Good evening, A.C. Good evening. My name is A.C. Dumas, and I reside at 533 East Rankin Street, and that's located in the Third Ward. And I want to congratulate uh, those newly elected uh, individuals and those who were reelected. First of all, I want to make this announcement that on Saturday mornings from 930 to 10 
a.m. on WFLT 1420. You can listen to the broadcast, The Truth Shall Make You Free, and I'm the host. It's a broadcast that's going to tell the truth because the people want to know the truth. That's all. If you tell them you can do it, do it. If you say, I can't do it, do it. You don't do it. But in this broadcast, we'll uh, let you know about the truth. We'll tell you what's going on, and you make the choice. I want to say that uh, on behalf of uh, Mrs. Galloway and Mrs. Poplar, when they uh, wrote about you in the paper, you're in good company. You're in good company with General Motors, Chrysler, RCA, American Airlines, all those, my family, other families is here, they filed for protection under, and these was years ago, not, and, and I'm going to say that years, years, many years ago, they filed for protection. Many, Donald Trump have filed bankruptcy four times. You know, so I have to agree with Mrs. Poplar that it's just something about the Flint Journal, something just rolls up in me. We talked about Mr. Mays and Mr. Davis. Something just rolls up in me. You know, the people elected you. And as they said, they did background checks on all of us. I guess if Mr. Nolan hadn't beat me, I'd probably been on the front page too for something. <laughs> you know, but uh, I'm from part of town where, listen, don't be threatened, let's go and do it. Do what you're going to do. Right. So uh, I want to let you know that I'm supporting you all and I'm supporting the council. I do have a problem. Problem I have, I see all these petitions for liquor license transferred. One in the third ward. God knows we got a bunch of them in the third ward. The first ward. The sixth ward. Liquor license, liquor license, liquor license. I would urge this council if it comes to you, I don't know if it goes to you or goes to the emergency financial manager. Well, uh, President Kincaid said, don't come to you all, I guess. So I guess we'll have more liquor license, more liquor stores in the city of Flint. More liquor license, more liquor stores. And I have a problem with that. You want to know what's dis uh, destroying our community. Liquor stores, all those things. I know it don't mean nothing to you. They own them. They don't live in our community. You ever look at those liquor stores? Got the sign. You know what? Just last year, broke my heart. A liquor store is from here to there next to a church. Bethlehem Temple. Bethlehem Temple. A liquor store. It grieved me. And if you as council representatives, you can call them. You can call the Michigan uh, uh, Liquor License, uh, Liquor Control Commission, say, hey, we don't need that. You can call A.C. Dumas and others in the ward and say, hey, let's, let's go up there to the meeting. We don't want another liquor store. They got a group now called the Flint Neighborhood United Party Store Liquor Establishment. They had a form at MCC saying that they're tired of liquor stores. I'm tired of liquor stores. I'm tired of drug dealers. I'm tired of all this vice our children have to grow up in. Don't look pious to me. I heard all y'all talk about God. <laughs> and he heard you too. God this and God that. How can you prove a liquor store talking about God? My motto is if you wouldn't do it in church, don't do it at all. Mr. Dumas. I know my five minutes up. Thank you. You know what? It's strange, Mr. Kincaid, 
how the clock went on and on and on when some people were speaking. When Miss Poplar was speaking, the clock went on. I'm not the timekeeper. I, I know it, I know it, but when A.C. Dumas started to speak, you know, but y'all listen to 1420 on Saturday morning from 9.30 to 10. I'm buying that. And I'm going to speak every half hour. Let y'all call in to speak. Mr. President. Mr. President, I enjoyed campaigning at the same time you did, Mr. Dumas, because you got a knack for spotting stuff. I'm going to just say it like that. You got a knack for spotting stuff, and when you speak, you got a knack for making sense. So just like in my ward, one person win, one lose. And I'm looking at what happened here tonight. And I was looking hard at that third ward as I had favorites in other wards. And so I'm just chiming in to say to you, you ran a fine campaign. I've lost way more than I won. And I don't want you to get out of this fight because we need help. You a deacon. I found that out. Deacon A.C. Dumas. And I'm going to say, God, I'm going to say deacon until I die. Because that's what I believe in. And so, God bless you, Mr. Dumas. I'm glad to see you still here in the fight. And you helped me. Because I'm telling you, I listened to that show. And I heard some say that the truth will make you free. God bless you. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is the Reverend Freelon Threlkeld. Reverend Threlkeld. Mr. Chairman, fellow councilmen, it is indeed a pleasure to be here tonight. I came because I'm concerned about Flint. The Bible speaks about, and there's a passage, and I'm paraphrasing, says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities in high dark places. Romans speak about 13 chapters say, render unto Caesar what is due. You were appointed, elected by the people, but God was in the plan. Not only do you have to answer to your constituents, but you have to answer to God. That's right. And in your decision making, <clears throat> you have to take that under consideration. Now, I came back tonight just to see how you would elect a president of this council. And just being a citizen sitting in the audience, observing the process. 